Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the CalReady electronic lab reporting system and how to get data sent through to it. We've actually had a number of people come to us looking for advice on how to make this connection. So we thought we'd create this quick video giving you an introduction as to what's required. So they've actually got a pretty good website actually CalReady. There's details about how to enroll uh, to get the connection. Basically you enroll with them, they send you some information on how to make connections including some message structure, uh, and validation. You then have to map your data into their HL7 message and send that through as a, it's a SOAP web service. So you send that through to them for processing. So we're just going to sort of dummy it up and just give you an introduction of how to do that. So I've got a samples directory, a C Windows car ready, and inside here I've got a very basic indication of the data that I'm uh, that your system produces. Uh, it's obviously not real and it's very limited. Yours will have a lot more information. You might have it in perhaps in another format as well. It could already be a type of HL7. It could be XML. It, it could be JSON. I'm sticking to a basic CSV, but it's the same for each of those. So uh, just giving you an idea. And then we've got a sample CalReady. And I'm just going to open that up in HL7 soup. And, and this is just one that I took from their documentation. It's not real data. It's just enough to muck around with, okay? As you can see, though, there's a lot of complexity in the HL7 messages that they have. There's a lot of data that actually goes through of each of them. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to map all those fields, but let me give you an indication of how to map some of them through, okay? So we'll start by loading up Integration Host, and I've already installed Integration Host. I've got the uh, development license in place. So I can now create a new workflow and we're going to be first of all converting our CSV file to HL7 so we're going to scan for that file. So I'm just going to put in a directory scanner and I'm going to search for anything that turns up in that CalReady directory and we're going to be looking for CSV files and I'll change that to CSV. And then we just put on a sample of that data. Now that one just happened to be a comma separated field, so I'm just going to put in it was good. Okay, so we for CSV it's just easier to put in some headers to, to fill in the places. But if you had XML or JSON, uh, you'd actually put the full message that you have into this into this message template. Finally, after it's processed, we're just going to delete that file. Okay, so as a second step we are going to add a file writer in and we're going to write it back into C CalReady call it test.hl7 uh, we'll change it to one record per file and we're just going to move it to another directory after we've processed it we'll stick with this C CalReady but we'll call this process Okay, we've got our HL7. So now we want to grab this message, copy it, come back into here. And I'm just going to place this in as the message template because this is effectively the message that we're wanting to write into that directory. This is the HL7 message. And we are now, and, and, and many of these fields are actually going to stay the same. Uh, many of them are literal values. Uh, so you can actually go into your sample value and you can put in whatever values suit. So if HL7 soup is a literal field that could go into this position, you could put in all your literal values that you've got that don't change per message into here. Now we've just got to map those values that you've got coming in into this message. So to do that, I'm just going to go into my transformers and you can see it's worked out from those headers that I gave it, all the, the fields that come in. Uh, this is a tree representing the outbound message. And so now I can just map the bits together. Uh, so I've got to map the patient ID, the, the PID patient ID with the ID coming in. So I can just drag that across from there to here. And it's created a binding between the two. I can do the same with the patient's name. So I bring the first name in, map it to the given name, the last name, to the family name and I'll also do the date of birth we'll map that across as well 
Now you're going to want to do all sorts of formatting to this as well. I've got some other videos on doing this. Uh, have a look at the getting started tutorials up the top. They'll give you a good introduction about how to get all the formatting right to go into an HL7 message. But I'm just going to stick with the very basics here and we're going to save and close this workflow and give it a try. So I go back to my sample directory and I'm now going to take that temp file, copy it, back up to there, and I'm just going to paste that into here. And notice it's now created that process directory that I specified and it's created 12 messages with a unique file name. Uh, each of those representing all the items, there were 12 items inside that CSV file. So if I take that and, oh, and I drag it over into HL7 soup, and we're going to merge those files in, and we can see all the messages are there, there's an invalidation in them, uh, that's because I didn't convert the date, they were a different date format. Again, look at those other videos to for the details on how to do that. But as a general rule, you can see what we've done is we've created an HL7 file that our literal values are in each of the records and our values that we have from our system have been mapped into those fields too. So now we're going to create another step to this process where we're going to read those values in and send them through to CalReady. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new workflow. Again, I'm going to do a directory scanner. I want to pick up that C process CalReady directory and I'm going to pick up all the HL7 files from there uh, and I just want to add in a message template again use that one use this one here so that's just a sample of what's coming in doesn't matter too much at that point uh, and once it's processed that file, we'll set it to delete after processing. Uh, the next step, we are going to now send it through to the web server. So we'll click on a web service sender, and we just need to get the location of it. Uh, and, and here is their WSDL address. I just happen to have that put aside, so it's easier for me to get to. I'm going to paste that in here. Now I'm going to try and connect, and, and this is going to fail. And the reason it's going to fail is because we don't have the certificate installed. So when you sign up for it, they will give you a security certificate. Uh, here's my one, so I need to install that onto my computer. So I'm just going to double click it. I'm going to choose to put it into my local machine. And uh, that path is good. Uh, I do need to know a password for it. And here is mine. I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to choose where to put it. I'm going to go browse to my personal. And then say OK. Say OK. And hit finish. And that has now been imported into my system. And there's one more detail I'm going to need to do. I'm going to need to get that certificate's thumbprint. So if I type in cert and then I go to manage computer certificates. Uh, and I go into personal certificates and open up my certificate. If I now go to details, and I can get the thumbprint of that certificate. Okay, and so I can now take that thumbprint back to here, and I can say show more connection settings, client authentication certificate, and paste it in here. And if you happen to have a whole lot of spaces in yours, get rid of the spaces as you paste it in. Okay, so now I can hit connect, and it has gone to CalReady and successfully connected to that data. And it's brought back the list of operations that are now available to me. So I can, there's a connectivity test and there's a submit message. So I'm going to choose submit message. I'm going to scroll down and see it's pre-populated all the fields that need filling out for me. Uh, so you do need to pass in a user ID. So I'll put in a dummy user ID. Uh, a dummy password. Uh, the data owner ID, if you're sending it on behalf of someone, you can use their user ID, but I'm sending it on my, behalf of myself, so it's just the same as my user ID. Uh, the program ID, um, it, I'm just sending it to one. 
Uh, so the Calridiella R is one, uh, CAIR is two, and CCR is three. Uh, the environment, uh, production or test, uh, P for production, T for test, and the action I'm going to do is send. And you could also put in query there if that was appropriate. Finally, the message content, we've got to put that HL7 message into here. Right, so in order to do that, I'm just going to bind in the value that this directory scanner picks up, okay? So in order to do that, let's scroll back down. All I have to do is right click in the right place, say insert activity message, and I'm getting that directory scan. You can see the directory scan is the same as that first activity, so I choose that. And so now that's that inbound message, that's gonna be recent as the content. Now I could put that inside, in, inside of a C data uh, to make sure that the it's not bringing across any fields that aren't allowed inside XML, you know, invalid XML characters. Uh, but also what I can do is I can right click on it, click encoding, and set it to XML encode. And notice it changes the color to green. So now uh, any bit of text in there that would make this XML message invalid, such as an ampersand in the wrong place, and that there are ampersands in HL7, uh, it's going to escape those. So an ampersand would become uh, ampersand amp semicolon, keeping that message valid. And so that's all that needs to be done. So if I now hit save and close, this is gonna start processing. Go back to integration host. You can see it's already actually processed 12 messages. I could have named that a bit better. Hang on, let me just rename that. Uh, send it. Let's just make it a little bit easier for you to identify the difference between the two of them. Okay, and then, so here we can see the logs of what's actually happened, if I click on that. And it's taken those messages uh, it's picked up the HL7, and the second step is it's actually sent it through, and there's the message that it's sent through, and here is the response we've gotten back. Now, of course, it's given us back a invalid username and password, but we have successfully sent them a message. If we put in the right username and password, and we've made a valid HL7 message, then that will work. Once we've got the username and password in, there is probably one other thing that you really have to keep in mind, which is they have a lot of fields inside their HL7 message that are required to be provided. So you've got to make sure that that message that this workflow is sending out has a decent message structure. So what you can do is I'm just going to take one of my messages and they have a validator tool. Um, this is on their website. You can fill out your details, paste in your message, hit validate. And once that comes back, we can hit download results, open up the report, and their validation tool will tell us what fields are, 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 you know, failed. So there was a few fields I didn't have that were required or missing, valid characters for them. They actually give you a pretty good detailed report. So each of those are gonna to have to be corrected inside of here, uh, and we would have to provide either a mapping of a transformer or a literal value into the right location. So I realize there's a lot to take in there. Uh, you are welcome to contact HL7 support if you need help connecting to CalReady and we can help you out in getting your integration working. Don't forget to take a look at some of our other videos that show you how to convert from different message formats into HL7. You'll obviously need to do that well. You'll have to get the data tapes right, the escaping of the characters correct. If this video has helped you, then please do give us a like. It really does help us and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you.